It was a gloomy rainy day, the kind that makes you want to stay indoors, but fate had other plans for me. As I glanced outside my window, in the distance I saw a tiny dot of black and white, running for its life. There, in the midst of the downpour, a small magpie was desperately trying to run away from a persistent dog. I decided to intervene and save the little fella. I dashed outside, shouting at the dog. Startled, it backed off, giving the terrified magpie a chance to find shelter in a bush. Its tiny body trembled with fear, and with all the stray cats that were nearby, I couldn't leave the baby bird to die in the storm. Determined to provide a safe haven, I decided to take a day off from work and dedicate it to saving the little magpie. I called the bird Puicho, and he quickly grew on me. But there was a problem. He couldn't really eat properly, as his beak was slightly damaged. I went to the pharmacy and bought a syringe, which I used to force feed the bird. I went through my garage, gathering materials to construct a cozy place for Puicho. Instead of closing him in a cage, I decided he would freely roam our apartment, but he would have a place of his own in one of the rooms. On the first day, my girlfriend wasn't really happy about that as Pucho looked like a wet chicken dinosaur and he made a mess out of everything. As I nurtured the magpie back to health, days turned into weeks. It turned out Pucho had problems with his leg and wing. We went to the vet and he told me Pucho might not recover fully because he had a broken wing socket. The vet gave me some medicine for the poor bird and told me to hope for the best. I watched the know as its once fearful eyes transformed into bright curious orbs. Every day Puitro grew stronger and eventually in a couple of weeks he recovered fully despite the odds being against him. Just a few days later, not only me but also my girlfriend started caring for him deeply. We developed a unique bond built on trust and understanding. I learned some of his language. It's interesting how birds like most animals have a programmed language in their DNA. Regardless of whether they grow up among other birds or humans, they always use their distinct sounds. Magpies have a certain sound over their parents that they want water or food. They have another to annoy cats. They have a mating call and they even organize funeral ceremonies for their own. Yep, this shocked me too. There's a website that maps the languages of birds and correlates their sounds with meaning. I used it and learned to listen to what Pooch wanted. Most of the time it worked. So these little creatures just like us communicate, they form bonds and friendships and they remember faces. They have emotions and even commemorate their loved ones after they pass away. And although their language is programmed in their DNA, that does not mean they are not conscious. Pucho learned to fly to me on command, and he became a very good friend. As many of you know, he was the producer of some of my videos and actively participated in filming them. Almost two months had passed from finding him, and he turned into a large bird that could probably live on his own. He was a teenager now, and it was time to let him go. I took him on my shoulder and we went back to the tree where he had fallen from. We looked for his parents, but he didn't want to return to them. He stood on my shoulder and didn't want to lift off, despite being an adept fire already. It was a testament to the intelligence and consciousness within the animal kingdom. At first, we thought he'd bonded too much with me, but this wasn't the case. He just wanted to stay a little longer until he recovers fully. Since I always kept my windows open, in case he wanted to leave, one day he spent the entire day with me and at the end of the day, he said goodbye and flew away through the window. A mix of joy and sadness filled my heart. I knew it was time for this little creature to spread its wings and rejoin his real family. Now, a few months later, I see him almost every day around the neighborhood. And he's made some new magpie friends, the same age as he is. He looks at me and sometimes greets me, but doesn't want to return back to our apartment as he is now free. Pucho is my personal example, but there are thousands of others. Throughout history, 
There have been extraordinary animals that have captured our imagination with their exceptional talents. One such remarkable creature was a horse named Clever Hans. Clever Hans was an incredible horse who astonished the world in the early 20th century with his mathematical abilities. He could solve complex arithmetic problems by tapping his hoof in response to questions. People from far and wide gathered to witness this extraordinary horse in action. With the crowd eagerly watching, they would pose mathematical questions and equations to Clever Hans, who would then tap out the correct answers with his hoof. Scientists and skeptics were baffled by this incredible feat. They conducted numerous investigations to uncover the secret behind Clever Hans' abilities. And eventually they discovered that the horse was not actually performing complex mental calculations. It turned out that Clever Hans was responding to subtle cues from his human trainers. He was picking up on their unintentional body language or slight changes in facial expressions when he reached the correct answer. This wasn't definitive, but while Clever Hans may not have been a mathematical genius, he still reminds us of the awe-inspiring abilities that animals possess in their own unique ways. This is even more impressive than doing maths, from the intelligence of dolphins and elephants to the problem-solving skills of crows and octopuses, the natural world never ceases to amaze us. Different animals can cooperate and even form emotional bonds. In Norse mythology, wolves and crows go hand in hand, or paw and wink, I guess. The reason these animals are always depicted together is that crows have an unwritten contract with wolves. Crows fly and find prey for the wolf packs. The wolves follow them, and after they kill prey, the crows can feast upon the remains after the wolves finish their meals. Those of you who follow my channel closely know that I am also fascinated by mycelium and fungi. Did you know that the forests have an immense underground network that allows trees and plants to communicate with each other? Beneath the surface of the forest floor, an extraordinary partnership exists. One that links the trees above with a vast network of mycelium below. This intricate connection is a symbiotic relationship between fungi and trees. Mycelium, the vegetative part of fungi, extends its delicate threads throughout the soil, creating a vast underground network. These fine strands weave their way between tree roots forming a network that spans across the forest. Throughout this symbiotic relationship, the mycelium and trees engage in a mutually beneficial exchange. The trees provide the mycelium with vital sugars produced through photosynthesis, while the mycelium aids the trees in acquiring essential nutrients and water from the soil. The mycelium's extensive network allows it to access nutrients and water beyond the reach of the tree roots. It acts as a conduit, transporting these resources to the trees, effectively expanding their access to the sustenance. In return, the trees provide the mycelium with carbohydrates, fueling its growth and reproductive processes. It's a remarkable partnership based on reciprocity where both parties benefit and thrive together. But this is not what's amazing. The most captivating part is how trees utilize mycelium to transfer nutrients and antigens between each other. When there is a sick tree at the end of the forest, nearby trees extend their supplies of nutrients throughout the mycelium and feed the sick tree. In return, the sick tree sends back antigens and vaccinates other trees, making them immune to sickness, so to speak. Plants, just like animals, communicate and are connected. To answer the question of whether animals are conscious, we must go through the current definition of consciousness, which is one's awareness or perception of an inward psychological or spiritual fact. This definition makes it impossible for a human being to determine whether another human being is conscious, let alone an animal. But I'll tell you this, Puichu could easily recognize himself in the mirror, and he knew very well where he ended and the world around him began. Every living being, no matter how small, deserves our compassion and respect. And I hope that by sharing my personal story with others, I can inspire them to take care of the phenomenal consciousness that exists beyond humanity. I'm Dank Suisoko and I thank you for watching Into the Unknown. If you're interested in consciousness and you're thinking about expanding your own, make sure you check my next video about the secret CIA brain enhancing program that I tested for a year and it works. And perhaps you should try to.